Oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe we're leaving the best beach of my life. We're coming back next winter for sure. I love it here. If you're looking for some crazy I'll tell you everybody's standing in a line for the water slide Here's something that doesn't always happen in the bus. We're towing the car, which means Mike and I get to road trip together in the bus, which is way more fun. How's it going up in the house? How do you like riding with me instead of riding in the vehicle behind me? What? This is 100% better. <laughs> this is the way it was meant to be. I mean, when we were building the bus, this was the way we envisioned it. This was the way we wanted it. Yeah. So. I can tell that the bus acts a little bit different than, uh, than it did uh, Without it on there. I really expected the transmission to get hotter, but I haven't noticed any different there. It gets warmer a little bit quicker, but not that fast. So even though we're doing these big hills and stuff, as long as I take it easy going up the hill, um, you seem to be doing fine. Excellent. Yeah. Hopefully we can do a whole lot more of this a whole lot more often. I agree. This was such a wonderful place to stop you guys, like for real. Um, we heard that it was a wonderful place and it just kind of worked out timing wise as a perfect stopping point for us. And man, we're glad we did. As you saw in the drone footage, what a fun place. I honestly wish we could have stayed a couple days, but we're kind of pressed for time right now. So we just kind of had to blaze on. So unfortunate, we're out of here. Here's another benefit to driving your house. You get to make breakfast on the go. Have you guys ever seen these little um, breakfast sandwich makers? So awesome. It has these different sections and layers that open up. And here's how it works. You start with the bottom piece of your English muffin in the bottom. And put your Canadian bacon on top of that. And then you crack your egg into here. Like this. And I like to pop the yolk so that it stays inside the white, like that. And then your top English muffin goes right on the egg, like that. And you set a timer for five minutes. We've learned by trial and error not to put the cheese on until the sandwich comes out of the sandwich maker. Otherwise, it makes a melted cheese mess all over your sandwich maker, and it's a pain in the butt to wash. When it's done, you slide this little lever over, which allows the egg to drop onto the bottom part of the sandwich. Then you flip it open, and your sandwich is ready to go. Open it up. Thank you.
you, huh, Chainer? I gotta put my seatbelt on, I forgot. Yesterday, at the end of our first day of driving, we stopped at this beautiful park where the front windows of our bus were overlooking a river and there's like playground and frisbee golf like to the left and right and behind the bus. But it was already evening time by the time we got there so we never really went outside and filmed how beautiful it was. Now, by comparison, at the end of our second day of driving, here is our scenic view. <laughs> it looks like we parked at the city dump. <laughs> this is terrible. You, you win some, you lose some. I know a lot of you have been wondering for a long time why we usually drive the bus and the car separately instead of towing. And we always try to explain this to you, but now I'm finally gonna remember to show you firsthand one of the reasons why we don't like to tow the car. Cause this is what it looks like when we do. It's ridiculous, you guys. And it's not like it just scrubs right off effort effortlessly. You have to put some elbow grease into it. Gnarly. So now you know. <laughs> Which, by the way, we're back in Arizona at my daughter's house. Again, I know you guys are probably wondering why we keep coming back here. It's centrally located. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> Anything good? Banjo Joe sent us a Banjo Joe oh, sticker and a koozie. That's a great sticker. Did you check to the return address? No. Oh, thank you. Whistle Pigs. What's Ooh. that? A CD? CD? A CD, it seems. Oh, we got two cozies. Boom, shakalaka, and two stickers. Sweet. You guys are not going to believe what Mike is doing today. Take a look at this. Do you see what I see? Goes right here. A downspout for our tailpipe. I don't know what it's called. Does it have an actual name? Mm. I'm sure it does. I don't know what it is. All I know is that the black soot will no longer be aimed at our hood anymore. Right. And our poor little missing eye. The question is, if I shoot it out to the side, I still think it's going to gather on the side of the vehicle. I think I should shoot under it. Down towards the road. Yeah. I mean, we can always adjust it later, but also the way this is attached to the frame over here makes it really, really difficult for me to put this on uh, any way but down right now. That seems like it should work. This is the throttle for the Jeep right here. Okay. This is not a Jeep. I'm, I'm sorry. This is a <laughs> throttle for the bus right here. This is all air driven. So it's pneumatic. So this back here, this right here is the throttle for the bus. Okay. And it's, there's this rod right here goes to this assembly back here. This assembly back here is pneumatic. So when I push down on the gas pedal, it operates this by way of air and it opens the throttle right here, the throttle body, which is right here. Okay. The weird thing about this whole thing is that I only can either accelerate or decelerate. There's no like happy place where I could put my foot and do 55 miles an hour. So I'm constantly accelerating and decelerating the entire time I'm driving for 500 miles, unless I just hammer down, which I can hold down about 65 or 70 miles an hour, depending on the, the wind, literally, and how much incline there is. So the problem is, is that what that tells me is that this is a little bit sticky 
and I can feel it when I push it that it moves in increments. It doesn't move smoothly. And so now is where I'm gonna fix all of that right now by just completely covering this whole thing in oil and exercising it so that it actually doesn't have sticky spots anymore because I have truly had it with that and I would love to be able to find a nice uh, sweet spot this yeah where I can just control this thing smoothly well essentially um, I went in and I tightened like every single oh, goat heads everywhere <laughs> on my back you tightened every single what I tightened all the bolts that all of them. I just went around and da, 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 all around the oil pan. Okay. There were some that were showing like, like significant oil on them. And when I put a wrench on them, they tightened easily. So they were loose. And as I went around and just kept hitting all the, ow, all of them, there were several that were significantly loose and I tightened them. And, uh, and also at the bottom of the compressor we put on, there's a plate that went on the bottom of it and that was loose. Um, a couple of them were loose, so I tightened those. And all of these places all showed like a black buildup of fresh oil. And so by tightening these things, hopefully I've reseated the gasket and, and solved the problem. So if we can drop the amount of oil we're leaking um, significantly, then the Jeep will stay a lot cleaner and the back of the bus will stay a lot cleaner. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, so, and everywhere we park, we won't leave an oil spot. All right, but well. But anyway, on the back of me. You're filthy. And covered in goat heads, which are terrible. Yep. I and just like that, we're back on the road again. To destinations unknown. Well, unknown to you. Definitely known to us. Keep left to I-10 West. A lot of driving ahead of us. A lot of driving. And you know what this means? We get to add a new state to the states we've been in the bus. Whoa, get in there. Cool. Poor little lonely Nevada over here. Doesn't it feels left out? I have to do something about that. Carrie's off doing the walk of shame because we forgot the uh, we forgot our passport book to get stamped, so she's walking back to the bus to get it. I'll do it next time because we forget every time. I got the National Park passport book. That's right. Let's stamp this puppy. There you have it, Joshua Tree National Park. Oh, oh, look, they have a Joshua Tree. How cute is that? Isn't that so cute? I love it. All right, as per tradition, we picked up our Joshua Tree uh, staff medallion that'll go on whatever walking stick that's big enough to handle and we'll Hold finally this get so that. I can see the picture. Cool. And then also we picked up our magnet like we always get at every national park. Almost every national Almost. park. <laughs> and it's gonna go right there. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Right next to our Padre Island and our petrified forest. <laughs> awesome. All right, on the road again. Look, it's a teddy bear choy of forest as far as the eye can see. Those are angry little things, let me just tell you. They are not cuddly teddy bears. No. They are ferocious teddy bears. Very ferocious. Look at this, it's just a sea of cat. 
practice out there. It's great being up in the bus. You're at such a high vantage point. You can see everything so much better. Okay, you guys, we are wildly disappointed with Joshua Tree National Park because it is so small. Like there's, you barely drive through the Joshua Trees for barely like two or three miles. Like you, you hardly see anything of them at all. And Mike and I were both expecting to just arrive at an endless forest of Joshua Trees like there is in Northern Arizona where we have been before. We expected the national park to exceed what we had seen of the Joshua trees in Arizona, and it did not. That Ooh. said, that said, if we if we came to an intersection, had we turned left, we would have gone to the little town of Joshua Tree, I guess. Yeah, we didn't really explore every single part of the park because we're just passing through trying to get somewhere else. But wow. we at least thought that we would be able to stop and have some great video opportunities amongst the Joshua trees, and we did not. There was nowhere, almost nowhere, that we could pull this bus off the road far enough to park and get out. And the one place that we did find where we could pull the bus off the road was very sparse. There wasn't very many Joshua trees and it wasn't very impressive. So we thought, oh, we'll go a little bit farther until it gets better. We went a little bit farther and it ended. Like the Joshua trees just stopped. It was over. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that, that was weird. So we honestly don't necessarily recommend this national park. I don't know. At least maybe not for a big rig. Maybe we're not giving it a fair shake. Yeah, at least not for a big rig like this. But coming from Arizona, where when you're driving up I-17 past Flagstaff on the way to towards Flagstaff, actually, on the way to on the way to Las Vegas, that's where there's just a forest of Joshua trees. So next time we're in that area, we'll stop and show you what they look like. Now that's why, that, that's why we thought this place was gonna be so amazing as far as Joshua trees are concerned, just because a place that we've been that wasn't a national park was far, far, the population of Joshua trees in that area was just saturation, it was massive. Like there was no, there was hardly any other kind of uh, uh, life there because it was just Joshua trees. So coming here, we expected it to be like, okay, this is the gonna be the Joshua tree mecca, and it wasn't. It was it was far from that actually. It was, yeah. And it wasn't big rig friendly at all. So like, it was just kind of a, a big winding with lots of big hills. Like we were first gearing it and getting real warm towing this vehicle. Yeah, up we were. Over big hills. We were going super slow and causing pileups of vehicles behind us, and then having to pull over and allow them all to pass. It was not easy taking this bus through that national park. No. So. And it wasn't worth it. <laughs> so now we're entering into 29 Palms, which is, uh, they, they call it an oasis in the desert, but I bet there's not a Marine out there that would call this place an oasis. <laughs> I wouldn't call this place an oasis. We're not even at the national park anymore. And the Joshua trees are more exciting here than they were there. And they're right where people live. Isn't that cool? Oh, that one had those blossoms on it. Oh, I totally want to stop by one of those ones that has blossoms on it. Oh, that's so cool. They are some kind of big old pods. Very neat. They look exactly like something out of a Dr. Seuss book, don't they? It's so weird to see them right here in town, right around a traffic signal and everything. It's like we've gone back in time to dinosaur times with dinosaur vegetation over here. except with all the modern streets and vehicles. When I 
I was growing up in California, these engines on these trains were yellow and blue, and they were just Santa Fe, but they merged with Burlington, so there you go. Now I got orange somehow out of that. I don't know how. The end of another day of driving. Almost. <laughs> just a few more. A beautiful sunset. Wow, it's gorgeous out there. Okay, so it turns out these are almond trees. I had no idea that any of the nut trees blossomed like this. Not only are they beautiful, but the smell is... It's amazing. Absolutely intoxicating. I had no idea. It's such a full smell of, like a flower smell, but just so full. Like, cause you're just surrounded by jillions of, jillions of yeah. flowers. Ah, so good. Mm, it's a lot like like honeysuckle. It's so sweet. Yeah, what a neat experience. <laughs> I know. I'm so glad we stopped. I thought there were cherry trees the whole time, but they're I not. I know. I was like, almonds. those are not cherries. Right. <laughs> but I thought they were peach trees, so we were both wrong. Yeah, totally. But I thought only fruit trees blossomed like this. Yeah, this is amazing. Who knew it could be nuts? <sighs> not I. Worth it. Super cool. I know. It was so awesome that we happened to be coming here at this time of year while these trees are in full blossom here. This is what they look like up close. Sometimes you just have Isn't to stop so and pretty? smell the roses or almond trees. <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> Definitely the most beautiful Walmart we've ever stayed at. Right across the street behind me, there's just a whole orchard of almond trees in full bloom. So it smells amazing here. And look what's over here. Bushes. They're so cute. I haven't seen these for years. When I was a little girl, I always said I wanted a bottle brush bush in my yard just because, I don't know, I think they're cool and it's fun to say, bottle brush bush. <laughs> The good news is we are downhill all the way, except for some little minor bumps, to our destination. Sometimes the places you park are just freaking awesome, man. Like, this place was cool. We got to stay here, it cost us 50 bucks, but we needed a place to park. California is not very friendly near the coast for uh, free parking, so you'd be really hard pressed to get a good place to park for free, but not so bad. Right on the water here in Moss Landing and uh, uh, this is kind of a cool place in the sense that it was always a landmark growing up. I grew up in Santa Cruz. It's right over there. And uh, I think the thing that gives it away is 
there's these towers over here. Yeah, I don't know if you can see them there. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Right there. You can see those from all over the Monterey Bay. And uh, it's always just been a landmark, but it's the power station for, uh, I don't know what it serves, probably Carmel or something like that, but uh, yeah, so pretty cool. But right ahead are some otters just playing around in the surf. the motorhome? This one is going to be for the tow vehicle. You Thank you guys for being understanding about that. that you, was... It's going to be way easier if you do unhitch up top here just because it's very small down there. And then when you get down, you're going to take a right here at the bottom of the hill. Mm -hmm. You're going to continue right past the A lot. You'll be the 21th one and the Alright, so go over here and unhook. I would just because it's I'm about to lose my little mind, but that's okay. Yeah, we just I'm hooked okay. back up again. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just going to lose my little mind. Thank you. I know. You've got to be freaking kidding me. Okay. Now she's recommending that we go unhook. Are you filming this? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Like I can't even dude. I, this made so no sense to They me. made us go hook back up. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I can't. They made us leave the park and go hook the car back up and drive into the entrance booth with the car hooked uh, hooked up so in order to not charge us an additional ten dollars a day then the instant we hook back up and drive back in they tell us we recommend you pull over here and unhook what i just like oh my god we're in california <laughs> this state is crazy and welcome to seacliff state beach I will tell you, that was the dumbest in processing I've ever been through with the most unreasonable uh, state park rangers I have ever dealt with in my entire life. And the absurdity of this cannot be measured. This was so ridiculously absurd. And it's just, it's almost like what the rest of, of the country expects from California. Like, it's truly that dumb. It was so dumb, I can't even, I can't even believe it. Like, and the way that lady treated me when we got here was straight up, like, she looked at me like I was a parasite or something. And I, I said, hey, uh, you know, I'm Mike and, uh, and we have a reservation for B20. And she looked at me, she's like, and she just like stared at me. Like, I, like I'd said something absurd to her, you know, like I, I said something completely unreasonable. And she His just looked at me like I was are wide dumb. enough that we can park the car next to the bus. Yeah, I actually looked at uh, in the uh, satellite pictures. All right, here we are. Not a bad view though. That's for sure. So we're down here. My dad goes for a walk every day and he's uh, he's in better shape than all of us put together. Yeah, and we love where he walks though. It's so beautiful. <laughs> he's trying to get And he's a joker. <laughs> but anyway, we're going for a walk with him today in his walk. He does uh, three miles a day. He's a beast. <laughs> 